Good evening, this is the Financial Week. I'm Herman Green. Rainforest Seafood has become the latest entity to target Africa, Ghana in particular, for expansion. The company made the revelation in an interview with The Business Day recently. Here's TVJ's Dashan Hendricks. And we just returned last this week from a visit to the west coast of Africa, to Ghana. General Manager at Rainforest Seafoods, Jerome Maz, outlining that the African continent is the company's next target. He said it's early days yet, but the signs are encouraging for various business models. So we could be processing there, we could be exporting from there to other places, even to Jamaica, and we could be selling products in. But he said the company is still crunching the numbers and going over the regulations it would need to abide by in a market as attractive as Ghana. Lots of people, growing middle class, Ghana is growing at 8% a year for the last 12 years. These are growth rates that you only find in very few other countries, probably India now, possibly China, and not even so much China anymore. And there are a huge number of unsatisfied needs of a middle class. In, in, in the capital of Ghana, which is Accra, alone you have more people than are in Jamaica. So if you can build a business on Jamaica's 2.8 million, you can build a business on that town alone, that city alone. That apart cultural similarities should also help. Most Jamaicans have their ancestral root in Ghana and the tastes are similar. Mr. Maz admits it will be a difficult market, but he said any business which has survived in Jamaica in the last 20 years is good enough to prosper anywhere in the world. Any market you go in, you have to, you have to be able to go in for the long term, you have to be able to invest, you have to be able to understand the market. I mean, I spent significant time in that market in a prior life. So I understand a lot of the nuances working there. It's not something that you're going to do in three to five years. You have to start to look 10, 15, 20 years old. For the Financial Week, I am Dashan Hendricks. High-level talks were held today with Venezuelan officials to discuss Jamaica's proposal to repurchase PDVSA's 49% shareholding in the Petrojam oil refinery. The buyback proposal was submitted by Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley on March 22 during a working visit to Venezuela. Dr. Wheatley says the proposal is consistent with the government's plan to assume full control of the country's energy security and facilitate upgrading work at Petrojam. Now, the buyback offer follows a fallout caused by a U.S. government executive order restricting transactions with Venezuela. Radio Jamaica reports disappointing financials for the year which ended March 31. The media company, which owns TVJ, recorded losses amounting to $42 million in the period. That was a turnaround from profit of $145 million for the previous year. Now, the outturn was influenced by softness in the advertising market for its radio, TV, and newspaper businesses. But Radio Jamaica says it is confident that the strategies it is pursuing will benefit its shareholders in the long term. Currency trading ended today with the U.S. dollar selling for $128. The Canadian dollar sells for $99.48. The pound sterling is going for $169.46, while the euro costs $149.23. The JSE index gained more than 3,286 points today, while the junior market index gained 15. Stocks posting gains on Friday included Access Financial, Berger Pains, Derrimon Trading, Jamaica Broilers, Mayberry Investments, Sagicor Group, and Scotia Group. Now on the losing end were 138 Student Living, Carreras, General Accident, Jamaica Stock Exchange, Kingston Wharves, Proven Investments, and Wisinko Group. And that's the Financial Week. I'm Herman Green. Good evening.